What's up Smart Homers? My name's Aaron. In this video, I'm gonna show you the upgraded version of the SwitchBot Curtain. Press start. If you saw my last video on the SwitchBot Curtain, which was a long time ago, you'll remember that there were two main issues with it. First, the bot had trouble navigating steps in the curtain rod due to the clamp style attachment. And secondly, there were only two good ways to integrate it with Home Assistant, one via the SwitchBot API and two via SmartThings, both of which required cloud connectivity. While those original curtain motors have been working for me without any issues, I wanna show you the SwitchBot Curtain Rod V2, which has an upgraded rod attachment system. And I also wanna show you how to integrate them with Home Assistant using the official SwitchBot integration. In the box, you get the main body of the motor, a pair of flex hooks rather than a clamp, a USB type C cable, fixer beads to keep your grommet style curtain space properly, and clips for tab top curtains. The upgraded version features no change in the motor body that I'm aware of. It's the same one from the previous version, capable of pushing up to 17 pounds of curtains, according to them. However, there's a significant change in the rod attachment design. They're calling this new design dynamic clamp because it allows the device to fit a much wider range of rod types and allows it to navigate small steps in the rod size a bit easier. Not only this, but it makes it a lot easier to install, if you can believe it. You just take one flexible attachment and hook it onto your curtain rod and then take the motor body with the other attachment on it and hook that one on the rod. Then you snap them together and you're done. This eliminates the need for tensioning those attachments at all because that spring mechanism provides an ideal clamping force. This was annoying on the old style because clamping them too hard on the rod would cause the motor to have to work harder than it needed to and decrease battery life. It would also inhibit it from going up steps and rods very easily. After that, you just set them up and calibrate them right in the SwitchBot app. It's helpful to get the SwitchBot hub, which costs a little more, but allows you to link two SwitchBot curtain devices together for them to act as one, so that if you want your curtains to open from the middle simultaneously, you can do that. The hub also brings cloud connectivity to the devices, so that if you want the devices to work directly with Amazon Alexa or Google Home, you could have voice control. Before we get into how they integrate with Home Assistant, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, SwitchBot. Speaking of their hub, SwitchBot has a bunch of other products that work with that hub and within their SwitchBot ecosystem. During Amazon Prime Day this year, SwitchBot products are gonna be up to 50% off. I left the code in the description of this video, and if you use that one at checkout, you can get 35% off on everything. Also, SwitchBot says that anyone who buys their product during a Prime Day sale from either the SwitchBot website or the SwitchBot Amazon store is gonna have a chance to win an iPhone 14 when they come out. Okay, now let's get back to the video. As I mentioned before, I've shown previously how to add these devices with the SwitchBot API and also how to add them with SmartThings, but I'm gonna show you the official Home Assistant integration, which actually uses Bluetooth. Because it uses Bluetooth, your Home Assistant hardware, of course, is going to have to have Bluetooth connectivity. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, you're probably good. But if you have something like a Home Assistant Blue, like I do, you'll need a Bluetooth dongle. This integration works for the SwitchBot bot and curtain, but I'm just going to be showing how to set up the curtain in Home Assistant. Also, you have to run through the following steps each time you want to add another SwitchBot device with this integration. Go to Settings, Devices and Services, and then click Add Integration in the bottom right corner. Type in SwitchBot in the search box, and then click the SwitchBot integration. Home Assistant is gonna begin looking for the SwitchBot devices, and it's gonna show you a list of any it found. The list is gonna contain the device type and the Bluetooth MAC address, so you need to look up the MAC addresses of your devices in the SwitchBot app under Device Info. If you have two curtains linked together using the hub, you only need to add one of those curtain devices to Home Assistant to get them to both react when you open or close them in Home Assistant. However, there is a caveat to this, which I'll explain later. Select the device you want to add and then give it a name. The password field should be left blank unless you've given that device a password in the app for some reason. Choose an area for the device and then click Finish. If you click on the device now, you'll see that it has a cover entity with position control, a light level entity, as well as battery and calibration sensors. So the weird part is that if you've linked 
two SwitchBot curtains together with the hub, and you've only added one of the devices, you're not gonna get two battery levels, one for each device, and you're not gonna get two light levels or two calibration entities. The ones that are gonna show up are the ones that belong to the device that you added. So if you wanna see the battery entities for both, for example, you're gonna to have to add both SwitchBot curtain motors. When I first set this up, the integration was a little bit finicky. Sometimes it would take five to 10 seconds for the motors to actually start moving after I told them to move. Sometimes it would take even longer that or they wouldn't respond at all. To get it to be less finicky, I went into the configuration options and set the time between updates to 10 seconds and how long to scan for advertisement data to eight seconds. This seemed to make it a little more responsive, but I could be imagining things. And the big issue I found was actually with the set of curtain motors that are furthest away from my home assistant hub. Sometimes the cover wouldn't respond at all to open or close commands. Instead, I would get an error that said failed to call service, Bluetooth command failed. What I determined was that this was because the two curtain motors that I was having this issue with were the ones that were the furthest away from my Bluetooth dongle. This shows the Bluetooth range is something you want to consider if you're looking at this product. Anyway, besides that, the devices have been running pretty smoothly. They definitely navigate steps and curtain rods much easier. And the new clamping mechanism also stays out of the way of the optional solar panels, making those super easy to add. To me, this upgrade shows that SwitchBot is dedicated to making their products better. And the fact that they're selling this one for the same price as the original shows that they're not trying to just release a new product to make a bunch more money, but they actually wanna make a better product. If you're looking to get the SwitchBot curtain rod, I would definitely recommend getting version two over version one. But if you're looking for the black color, as of the release of this video, the black version is still on pre-order. If this video helps you out and you wanna see more like it, please consider subscribing and press the like button to help with the algorithm and to show me that you liked the video. If you have any questions about something I didn't cover or something I missed, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'm definitely willing to do more testing if you have questions. Anyway, thanks for watching, see ya.